Hello, my name is Extreme Caffeine, and I'm a pound shop addict. Yeah, he is. He's turned me into a pound shop addict as well, actually. <laughs> what can we say? We really love pound shops. You can get some quality stuff in pound shops, which the video today is going to demonstrate to you what quality stuff and not so quality stuff you can find in a pound shop. Emphasis on quality. <laughs> um, so uh, the other day we were in Glasgow and we visited two pound shops and bought a selection of either useful or crap stuff. And we're going to find out how useful and crap they are. So uh, what should we start with? We've got quite a lot here actually. Hmm. Um, who should we start with? Should we? Let's, let's start with my favourite one. This is the first item that we bought. It is this. Might not be able to see it, but that is a pencil sharpener in the shape of a solid gold tower bridge. Yes, we found this in a, in a pound shop in Glasgow. A London tower bridge pencil sharpener. Like a solid gold it's just, tower bridge. It's the tackiest piece of shit we've ever actually seen in any pound shop ever, which is why we had to buy it. Um, so we're actually going to test its effectiveness as a pencil sharpener because, you know, we could be slandering it and it might actually be really good. Um, okay, as you can see, it's there, it's there. What a horrible, nasty piece of shit that is. And, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's basically just a piece of metal with a plastic sharpener kind of stuck in there. Can you see that? Okay, so we have a well and truly fucked pencil because I literally cut the top off of it. Okay. So how, how does it feel? Like a bulky piece of shit. You would want to carry this in your pencil case to school. I think we can all appreciate that sentiment. Okay, it's actually... Okay, the sharpener itself isn't too bad. If only there wasn't a solid gold tower bridge attached to it. Okay, actually, actually, yeah, that's done a pretty not too bad job. I mean, the end of the pencil's completely fucked. Like I said, I cut, I actually literally cut the tip off of it. Um, do we have something we can test it on? Pad of paper. And... Once again, the pencil works. So yeah, Hooray. Hey. actually, as a pencil sharpener, okay, it's not too bad. It's a tacky piece of shit, and to be quite honest, I'd much rather just have the pencil sharpener that's inside of the tacky piece of shit. But it will sharpen your pencils. And if you like gold crap sitting on your desk, because you sure as hell wouldn't put this in your pencil case, this is the ideal thing for you. So what else did we buy? I'll tell you what we bought. We bought... Something which I have been wanting to buy for one reason, one reason only. Emergency blankets. Not because... Not because I'm a walker, climber, mountain biker, runner, skier or snowboarder. But because they're silver. And... Blankety. I've tell, tell the nice people the real reason why you bought them. I want to wear them as a cape and run around. <laughs> so you get two of these for a pound. There are they are one meter by two meters approximately. Um, they are, as I mentioned, suitable for walkers, climbers, mountain bikers, runners, skiers, and snowboarders. And apparently, tards who want to run around looking silver. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about idiots who want to wear them as capes. There you go. It's everything I ever dreamed of. It's actually, it's actually a bit like unpacking a giant bin bag. <laughs> but silvery. <laughs> oh my god, this is glorious. <laughs> Oh my god, it's huge! 
shit. It's glorious. It's wonderful. I love it. I'm gonna sit here like this no, for the rest not. of this for the rest of this show. Okay. So the, obviously the purpose of these blankets um, is to keep um, people warm. Um, you normally see them at the end of like marathons where the runners get wrapped up in one of these to help them keep all their heat in. But the question is, does it actually work? Okay, <laughs> here we are outside. Well, let's see if this does work. So, the, um, the blanket didn't keep you very warm then. <laughs> no. It's cold. You're still cold. Oh dear. Obviously those, obviously those blankets aren't really as effective on um, people like you. So Poundland lied to me. <laughs> Have you been betrayed by Poundland? Yeah. Oh. I thought that... Outdoor Solutions was a brand to trust, just like Toolbox. And their epoxy glue! You, you have A, which is resin, and B, which is the hardener. Um, we don't really have anything to test this on, we're just going to assume that Poundland brand epoxy glue is just as good as the brand name stuff that you can buy in the shops. Once once we've tested it on something, we can find something to test it on, we'll let you know. Unfortunately we have no small children handy. So another one of my favourite things that we found in the pound shop was this! It's cheap shitty Lego! And this one is a rocket launcher! Ah! Rocket launchers are so much fun! Well, they're, apparently they're fun. Let's Let's, uh, let's have a look. It's called Click Brick. Next generation. Interlocking plastic building bricks. Just in case you didn't know what these are. Or cheap shitty Lego knockoff as we all call it. What were the other ones in the range? Uh, there is a battle tank and an excavator which you can see listed on the back there. But uh, I thought the rocket launcher looked like the most interesting. Okay, so uh, let's just open this up and then um, have a look. So there we go. There's your building bricks. And uh, your instructions for putting it together. So um, let's put it together and uh, see how it looks. Oh my god, what are all these pieces? <laughs> okay, so... What do we need? Okay. And we put the tire... Then we put the tires on the fucking wheels. <laughs> they couldn't even put the tires on the fucking wheels for us. No, we have to do that ourselves. Faster, Dre. Fucking hell. Although it is nice that it is actually proper tires <laughs> on wheels. Rather than the Lego thing, which is just a solid plastic wheel. Go on the back. Yeah. Or they're supposed to anyway. Go on, you fucker! Holy shit! It's a rocket launcher! <sighs> it's actually pretty cute. I was, I mean, to be honest, having had experience with lots of crap. I was, n it fits together much better than I expected. It does have that satisfying Lego click when you put bits together. It doesn't feel too cheap and nasty actually. It feels, it feels quite sturdy. Um, as far as things that you can take apart and put together at well. The wheels are a bit weird, but um, unlike Lego wheels, which are just solid plastic, these have a plastic um, hub and a rubber tire, which is a nice touch. Yeah, they... They don't yeah. really spin well, though. Yeah, they don't spin well because he's put them on the wrong way. Oh. There 
Rick go, Benwell. Oh, actually. <laughs> wow. Oh. Um. And yeah, that's the. Uh, that's the rockets there. Removable. Little. Whoa, dropped it. Look, little rocket. <laughs> and it just clips on. And the wheels move, and the little turret on top actually moves. It moves up and down. And spins. And it spins. Okay, yeah. This is spinning on it's a wee bit sticky. But yeah, actually. For a pound, that's not too bad. If you were to buy that from um, Lego, it would probably cost you about five or little things like this in Tesco cost about between like three pound fifty and five pound for little things like this from Lego. So actually, not not too bad. One of the better things that we've seen in the uh, Poundland, I have to say. I'm I'm mildly surprised. I expected to open this and for it to be a piece of shit, and actually, I quite like it. It's pretty. It's pretty cute. Although I think I finally worked out what these bits do. No, I've got extra bits. I thought they maybe go here. No, so it's not in the instructions to put them there. But now it had little eyes. Brows. <laughs> eyes! Brows. <laughs> <laughs> had little oh. red eyebrows. <laughs> and we've got an extra bit. Another extra bit. Was... Yeah. Which is surprising, we were expecting not to have all the pieces. I know. We have more pieces. <laughs> we have more pieces than we're meant to. It's amazing. Oh, I just broke it. Ah, still good. Okay. It's the magic of not Lego. Yeah, I broke it now. Ah, well, we'll fix it. Uh, one thing that I love, but are much more difficult to find now, are carabiners. Yeah, it used to be everywhere. You could buy them in hundreds of different places at incredibly cheap prices. The important thing to remember is these are both of assorted colours and sizes and not to be used for sporting activities. Yeah, so don't try and haul yourself up a mountain with these because you'll just fall to your death. Yeah. So this is going straight for the big one. These are five and five different sizes from dinky up to less dinky. <laughs> <laughs> they uh they seem to work. They all seem not for climbing. Even this tiny one which uh yeah. I wouldn't use that tiny one for climbing. This is not for climbing on it. Oh yeah, this is not for climbing! <laughs> but if maybe your Barbie wouldn't want to climb, this is the perfect accessory. Yeah, these little um, rings on them are actually quite annoying and I don't think they would be effective as key rings to be honest. They're a bit kind of... A bit thin. A bit flimsy and nasty, but the actual... Um, the carabiners themselves are pretty, they're pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're effective for like, oh I used to have one for, I had one about that size that I attached to my iPod and I would attach my iPod to my jeans using one of these but yeah I mean um, they actually look very similar to the ones that you can get in a uh, shop, can't say which shop, um, and the ones in said shop are about like like five or each or something and the, you know actually these are actually pretty good for a pound yeah although they're not for climbing so what else did we get in the toy sticks um, um we got this what is this it seems magical it is a magic square <gasps> and um there's nothing on it that tells you what you can do with it. There are some pictures on the back which suggest that maybe you can make pretty shapes out of it. So let's see what we can do with it. And here it is! <sighs> but it doesn't seem to be a square at all. What the fuck do you <laughs> do with this? The Brain Series. Apparently it's from the Brain Series. Don't know if you can see that. A little blue sticker there. Blue sticker says it's from the Brain series. Um, For brains. God, this is this is hor This is this is jaggy. 
and sharp and hearty. <laughs> <laughs> it has hearty bits on it. This seems like the kind of thing that's perfectly appropriate for a three-year-old. Oh look, it's a dolphin. <laughs> I don't know what it. You, okay, right. You turn the pieces, and they kind of click into shape, and some of them just don't are broken and don't <laughs> want to move. And presumably, you can make a square out of it. I don't know how. Oh. Uh, I don't, think you're breaking it. Don't bend it that way. <laughs> so, the magic square is in many ways just like real magic. A fraud! <laughs> Somehow I cannot imagine Dumbledore being involved with this at all. Oh, okay, right. It's... Yes, this is fucking it's nasty. It's a shepherd on a hill, standing on one leg, <laughs> as portrayed by Dali. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to stop playing with this now. Yeah, um, that was a waste of a pound. Because that is just a cheapy, nasty, horrible piece of shit that... You can't. I suppose if you had a sort of artistic and creative mind, unlike my own, you could probably form this into like a dolphin or something, or like a swan, but. Or a duck. Or a goose. <laughs> oh my god, a goose. Oh my god, I don't know, a goose sounds too ambitious. That sounds pretty ambitious. I think I went too far with that one. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, piece of shit. Don't buy it. But what did we buy that you should buy? A book! A book! A book! It is called Welcome to Britain. Uh, we've already looked through this book. We had a flick through it on the train back from Glasgow. And if you ever wanted a book which portrays just how scummy Britain actually is, this is the book for you. If you would like to remind people of like the fact that we have, you know, a lot of really kind of nasty looking chicken shops or some rather obscene looking gnomes or maybe... Council estates. Council estates, concrete. Um, oh, people lying down in the park. Look at these lovely people lying down in the park. Um, birds, gardens, and toilets. Yep, it's all in there. All the different ways that make Britain look really scummy, cheap, nasty, dirty, filthy, yuck, yuck. Three pairs of songs <laughs> for two ninety nine. This is the book for you. The best part was when we actually recognised at least one of the places in the book. What I dug! Oh. There was one other thing that we found, and we've been saving it, because this is the single best thing that we've found in a pound shop the entire day, possibly ever. down now. It actually feels pretty nice for a um, a pound shop item, I have to say. It's um, okay, it's the, ah, there we go. Okay, the, the clasp on it is really cheap and nasty and you could potentially break it while trying to fold it back down. But, oh, it's so colourful and cute and like yeah, I could, I, I could, I could wander around with a with the fish on my umbrella. I mean, it's got little fins and everything. How adorable is that? And for a pound, how can you go wrong? But the question is, does it actually work?
Hey! Hey! <laughs> and uh, yes, actually, yeah, it works. It works pretty well. I, I'm, I'm dry, as you can see. So yeah, um, excellent. That's my, that's my favorite thing I've ever found in a pound shop ever. My favorite thing is still porn. <sighs> But the fish brella comes a close second. So that pretty much sums it up for our adventure into the pound shop land. And um, hopefully we'll find some more interesting crap to show you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye.